Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube video where today I'm with Dan, Dan Meadows. Thank you very much for coming on your first Way to Fire video. Indeed. Because today we are going to be doing some The Walking Dead from Mantic Games. We'll be playing some of their new Walking Dead scope. Well, new. It's been out for ages. Yeah, uh, but um, we're going to be doing that principally to show off some of the new things that Dan and uh, Paul Welsh have been working on on yep. your new tournament coming up. So, Winter's End, I would say mainly Paul, I'm the minion, but unfortunately Paul can't be with us today, he's quite poorly. <laughs> it's so cold, isn't it? Uh, I'm in his uh, place. The infection started, so amputation's coming <laughs> soon. So the Winter's End is going to be on the 2nd of December, is that 2nd right? 2nd of December, so it's uh, on a Sunday, it's going to be at um, Element Games. It'll be good, so get there if you've not already booked. Yeah, and so the general premise is that it's uh, winter has come, isn't it? That's why I've set it in the winter thing, yes. and it was four scenarios. Four right? scenarios, um, they're going to be 90 minutes each. It's all played on 24 inch um, boards. There's um, some cool scenery that's going on there. Um, and there's a few things that we'll go through. In this yeah, case. some custom rules, which we'll spy mm. in a moment. So this will be our first Walking Dead uh, video. So hopefully you'll enjoy what we do. And obviously we'll be showing off some of those new things that will be specific to Winter's End. So it won't be quite like a normal game of The Walking Dead if you're using just the standard core rules. But we'll explain those bits that are different as we go. Yes, I'll try and point out, because I know when I've watched battle reports before online and you're trying to follow something so you can copy it, there's some unique rules. So I'll try and explain what's core game and what we've added. Yeah, super. So let's have a little look at the forces. So team one is a Woodbury baddies sort of setup. So we've got Craig is our runner. He's equipped there with a, a riot helmet. This is going to be a 250 point crew. So Craig is a uh, the runner. And then moving across, we have Thomas. Thomas is armed with the uh, katana there. So he's going to be rolling blue white. He's a tactician. Um, so he's quite useful with his stab keyword, which allows him to re-roll his attack dice. Over to Eugene, he's a good bruiser. He's armed with uh, Rick's hatchet, so he's going to be um, quite a threat in close combat. We've teamed him up with Harold Abernathy. He's also on the Woodbury crew. He's got a claw hammer and a small knife, so he can re-roll one of his attack dice there. And then introducing one of the new Wave 5 uh, Oh, sorry. sorry yeah, introducing me. one of the new Wave 5 characters, one of the Hunters. This is Charlie. Um, he's a marksman. He's been armed there with the AR-15, which is an armour-piercing um, assault rifle, so it's quite devastating, really. We've given him the bandolier, and because of the team formation, because he's not one of the faction from Woodbury, we've had to give him the turncoat veteran skill, which is at the bottom there. So what the turncoat ability allows you to do is borrow somebody from a different faction and change their faction symbol. So Charlie is guesting with the Woodbury's and the neutral faction people to form the baddies. And they're all brand new in Wave 5, aren't they, these veteran the hunters. Yeah, veteran skills is a new element that's been added, um, along with uh, Charlie's, one of the hunters from Wave 5. Okay, so that is Team 1. So first up for Team 2, we've got Amy. Um, we've given her the inspiring leadership ability. So by teaming her up with Andrea, who's to come, she's actually better than her low nerve and the inspiring leadership allows her to donate one of her actions to give Andrea a third action, which could come in useful for that aimed shot with the crossbow. So over to Andrea. Andrea, the skilled sharpshooter version. Um, there's three different versions that I'm aware of, but this is the skilled sharpshooter, meaning she can shoot twice. Um, she's armed with the crossbow and the ammo reload, and we'll go into some of the changes that Winter's End has introduced for crossbows, because it does uh, stop it being a Death Star insta-kill <laughs> machine. Uh, over to Sophia. So to use up the last uh, six points for Team 2 is uh, Sophia. She's a runner and she's there to try and grab some of the supplies. But this also introduces another element that's just for Winter's End. And what that is, is the pack space here indicates how many supply tokens they're allowed to carry at any one time. So normally Sophia would be allowed to grab like seven. Um, we've introduced a rule where she can only carry her equal to her pack size. So that's the reason for using her as a demo. Um, we've now got Scott Moon. He's an interesting character. So with his uh, blind loyalty, he's really trying to impress the leader. And what that means is he can actually get three turns um, and be immune to panic. We've given him the chain. Um, and what that does, that can actually act as a melee weapon or even a ranged weapon up to three inches. So with his two attacks, he can uh, down a couple of walkers, hopefully. So we'll see what happens there. We've got Shiva. So we can see what she can do. Um, She's not been given anything because she's got the beast rule, so <laughs> she shouldn't really be 
tanked up any more than that. And then our leader there is Ezekiel. He's got his uh, trusty sword stick, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. And uh, we've given him the keepsake, which could come in handy for uh, killing a certain walker that we will see. Uh, and that is team two. So all of the Winter's End scenarios are going to be played on 24 by 24 mats, which is the larger size mat. I would like to say a big shout out to Deep Cut Studios. This is one of their mats that they've um, given us prize support. It's great quality. Um, so all of the uh, boards that we'll be using will be, have been supplied by Deep Cut. Um, this scenario is called Take and Hold. And we will explain that on each of the boards for the event, there will be fixed blocking um, scenery um, of some description, and there will also be fixed area terrain, like trees that you can move through. They will be locked down on each of the boards, and then the normal scenery placement of your uh, vehicles, your sort of supply hubs, and your barriers will go around that. But on each of the boards, we'll have that. Anyone at home who wants to try and use it, and you've got the, um, the farm, um, you can use the barn. Um, which is a five point piece of scenery. You can put that in one place and you should have the trees, which I think are uh, uh, pretty much pretty, good, pretty much the same. Yeah. So they are what you can use at home if you want to have a practice, but put that and on the side. And they're from the green farm expansion, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Right, great. So we'll come back to this table in a moment, this lovely deep cut mat, when um, we've laid it out ready for the game. One thing we didn't mention, sat here in the middle, is a walker, an armoured one. So what's he about, Dan? So this is Take and Hold. The whole objective of this one is to um, kill that walker, make him prone, take control, which is a special action, which is useful because there's eligible survivors. So we'll explain what that means. And then your uh, survivor crew is trying to drag him off the board. So the Why would you want a walker? He's got kit on him. Ah, I see. He's got all the uh, the good kit that you want to try and retrieve. Yeah, that makes so sense. Uh, that's why you want that, because the uh, riot gear is quite precious. Um, and all the other goodies that he's got in his rucksack. So that, that's like the reason that. for, for this scenario. Um, but the, the scoring system is done on the um, 10 uh, point scoring. So there's uh, objective points, uh, gives you scenery, uh, scenario points, then there's supply points, then there's a bonus point. So if you are the team that manages to kill this walker and nothing else, then you will get one scenario point. If you manage to be in control of him when the game ends, that will be two scenario points. And if you are managing to get him all the way off the edge, that will be three scenario points. And then there's other bonus points um, for the supplies and for surviving more than half of your crew. At the end of it, add up your um, scenario points, add up your opponents, and then the difference will make um, your score. So if uh, I manage to get two, but uh, you get one, that's one difference, so it would be moved off five and not other way, so it becomes six, four. So if you win four, two, difference of two, that becomes a seven, three victory. And it works like that. So it's all explained in the rules, but it's just the difference in your scenario points becomes your difference in the event points. And we'll put a link to the tournament pack. Yeah, I've made that sound so much harder than it is, ah, but we will explain as we go along. It's perfect. So this is after setup. So as we said, this is a 24 by 24 inch deep cut mat. We've added down the scatter terrain with the vehicles, the walkers and the barricades, as well as obviously the usual items. Uh, my team is here, so we've got Amy and Andrea next to each other for a combo and giving extra actions to Andrea. We've got King Ezekiel himself with Scott Moon in the middle and Shiva beside to give some filthy attacking. And even Scott can do a bit of decent attacking, obviously by taking a um, taking an action from Ezekiel. And then in the corner we've got Sophia, who is going to be hopefully grabbing some of these items that are lying up here. All these zombies, are, uh, walkers, sorry, have been placed five inches outside. And then on this side, Dan has put down his team. So, so he's I've got, got Charlie's hiding out here. He's got the hunter ability, so he can go through the woods without impeding his movement. Yeah, and he's the marksman, of course. We've got Thomas over here. We've got Craig in the middle um, with Eugene. Then Harold is over here. So for this one, on top of the blocking terrain, there's no elevated, you can't climb up to it, you can't be shooting off the top of it, and you've got your area. We've got four resource hubs, your four cars, and then there are four barriers. So that's how we're setting this one up. So we're going to start at threat level four here, because that's what the scenario written for Winter's End is going to be. And I'm going to start by activating Amy down here. She is going to give up one of her actions to Andrea because she's within her kill zone. And then 
so all she's going to do next is just sneak over this way a little bit and that is her activated. So I'm going to activate Eugene, I've already pre-measured that I know he can run to this uh, resource hub, so he's going to run in line, that creates the noise that brings this walker in, so he's tied up for melee. I'm going to go back to uh, Andrea for my first activation, and she is going to shoot with her crossbow at this walker here. So to shoot, she gets a white and three red. That's a basic. And well, this will show off, she's using a crossbow, so this will show off potentially some of her new rules. So let's see what she gets. So she gets a good shot. A one dead walker. One dead walker. So that's fine. He obviously can't save against that on his single red dice anyway. So that will kill that walker. Yep. But what we have to test for now is whether it creates noise. So first we do the ammo check. Ah, and sorry. then we create noise. But certainly, yeah, that's right. one of the newer ones. So first thing, we... So sorry, in, in, sorry, in the core rules, you'd always have the ammo check. So we'll go with the ammo check. So the ammo check is to do, um, because I've got an exclamation mark, I need to roll a black dice. If I get a shield, I'm good. Yes, and it's reliable. And, it's, and I get a shield. So reliable meant you could have re-rolled it if you hadn't have yep. got a shield. But you're fine for that one. And then the new mechanic for um, Winter's End, or oh, kill that walker. Yeah, bye walker, go um, on. The new mechanic now is that there's a potential, there's a 50-50 chance it's caused noise. So you're going to roll the black die again, see so if it's caused mm -hmm. noise on a, a shield, you are fine. So those days of willingly sort of just crossbowing everyone in sight are gone. But, and, but it's quiet, so you are fine for this one. Perfect shot. Well done, Andrea. However, that was only one action, so she actually gained an extra action. Hmm. I might shoot again. So I will shoot at this walker here. Try and take those down, so it'll be the same. Shooting again. Uh, nowhere near as good, but still three and a headshot, so also takes him out. Again, we will test for ammo first. Oh dear, but reliable, as Dan mentioned before. Oh, not so good. That's what we like to see. But she does have an ammo reload, so she came prepared. But more importantly than that, let's test for the noise. And it does cause noise. So, so the nearest walker. Nearest walker is going to be Mr. Mechanic there. It's going to be that one. And, and he's going to shamble and he's yeah, going to hit the car. Bump into the car. So that is a new thing. Um, maybe as I hit that zombie or that walker, sorry, with the crossbow, he thudded heavily into the car. Twang. Yeah, and dragged the other walker in towards him. Okay, so that's two of her actions. Um, it's how many actions to reload? It's two. With two to reload. So, so you can't do one that. Thing. So you can't have a bandolier yeah. um, that reloads it in one. So there's a winter's end rule. Yes. Yeah. Crossbow will always be two. Actions. And I can't split it over turns. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to sneak a little. Yeah, we're going to sneak up beside our sister to keep there to get the benefit. And the reason why that's a good move is you need to be in the kill zone of Amy for the next turn to get inspired yeah. leadership. So uh -huh. I'm just going to review that. I did, I did know that. Yes, I did. <laughs> so I'm going to activate Thomas. He's a tactician, so one of his actions will be spent holding his nerve. So I'm going to reduce the threat down to three. And then on his next action, he's going to run and create some noise. And I'm going to make sure I'm still closest to this walker. I just want to pull it from that car. So I'm going to do just less than my full distance um, to about there and that will pull the nearest walker as he created noise and that leaves that car free for me to search. It's almost like you planned that. Almost. <laughs> so I'm going to activate Shiva and I'm going to run her to there and that will pull in this walker. And so she will hopefully rip that one apart next round. So I'm going to activate Harold. He's going to charge forwards. I know that's going to be less than his normal move. I've got to make sure that that's not within sort of shambling range. So he's actually going to stop about there. And that's going to pull that one off the car. All right. Uh, I am... I might try out Scott Moon out. But first off, to use Scott Moon properly, I have to activate Ezekiel first, you don't do. I? Yeah. So I'm going to activate Ezekiel and just move Ezekiel up there, just short of the fence. In fact, I'll put him just there, actually. Yeah, 
and he, well, I think he'll try and he'll push the nerve down as well. So he's not going to have another action to pass to Scott if he does that. Oh yes, no. So he won't do that. He's just going to save the other one to pass it to Scott. Yeah. Right, so that's, you. That's what he can. So I will activate Craig. Uh, I'm trying to get to there, but I don't want to create noise and bring anyone else into uh, combat. So he's just going to have to go his sneak range. Now we know from setup that you will just be yeah. short, so it'll look quite close normally, um, depending on how you've set it up. I know that that's the, uh, the sneak range, but he's still short of the, uh, the car. Okay. Yeah, and he's just passing uh, his second He action. may as well have a stab at reducing threat. So yeah. we'll see if he holds his nerve, and he does. He manages so to hold it. knocked it down, it down to, to two. two. Okay, Scott Moon now is going to, how do, how's the best way to do him? Just to move forward to create noise, is it? Uh, you could potentially sneak, have a crack with your chain. Um, From a distance. Chain. Yeah, he's yeah. three inch range. Yeah. And then he could do something else, he could see where he's up to and probably try and finish it. Or... Okay, right, well we'll do that. So we're going to move Scott up to here. He's got a three inch range on his chain. Obviously he's now got three actions because he's trying to impress Ezekiel, see, I'm not rubbish, don't jump me out the gang. So I'm going to attack um, that walker in front of me, and I will get two red dice, one for his normal and an extra one for his chain. So let's see how they go. Uh, just one success. Let's see how the walker does. Let's use something else that's dun, new dun, for... Dun, 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 Look so at that. All um, entrants to Winter's End get some of these uh, cool walker dice. So when you're doing multiple combats, you can just substitute this. It's the same as a red die. So let's have a little close look at that. So, so you can see there's dripping your, teeth on there, the usual exclamation side. mark. They've got the blank. The blank. These are in so a it's nice... the same as a red. You can use it instead. But if you roll this as part of a multiple melee, it's easy to keep track of which are actually a bite and which is a headshot from a walker. Yeah. So it's quite good. So we'll see if this has done anything. And it's defended. Yeah, okay. So I guess with his next action, I'll repeat the same, can I? Yeah, I might as well have that another makes crack. Makes sense. So you normally you couldn't repeat an action, but yeah. one of Scott Moon's um, abilities is that he can. So that's why he's okay. using it with a chain. And um, so we get another one we'll again. again. And we'll see so. if we do. Ta -da, ta -da. Yeah, so that's not going to be good for Scott in a minute. Oh well, never mind. He's expendable anyway. So potentially, because of the range of the chain, he could have measured it out to make sure he was outside of the walker. No, I wasn't range. clever enough to do uh, that. So that's just a, a learning point for future. Not for Scott, it won't be. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. He, he does defend with the chain as well, so we'll, we'll see how he, he does. <laughs> so, this could go horribly wrong. Charlie is going to run to about there, and then he's going to fire. Now, I haven't got a silencer on my automatic weapon. Mm -mm. And this, the, what I'm going to see is if I can pull the armoured walker towards me, then I've got less to carry it if I do actually kill it on the next turn. But it could be sacrificing Thomas, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to run to there. What I'm trying to do is stay outside shamble range when that comes for me. So that's the nearest unengaged walker, so that's going to come to there and then I'm going to shoot it. That is the plan. So I've run, uh, I'm not taking an aim shot, that's one of the what Winter's End rules you're not allowed to do, you can't move and then get an aim shot if you're a marksman, you'd struggle with that. So his normal shot um, with the AR-15, he adds a blue as his shoot and it's white, it's armor piercing, it's assault, it's multiple shots. So with that, I'm gonna get three shots before it causes the mayhem. So the dice I'm going to be rolling, Charlie adds a blue as basic, and with the AR-15 assault rifle, I'm going to add a white. It is a rifle, but I've not taken a name shot, so I can't add the extra white. Um, so I'm going to be rolling that, and because of the assault rule, it's within the six inches, so I get to roll this an extra time, so that's going to be three shots with this, so I should blooming well kill it before <laughs> the mayhem descends on me. So we shall see. And that is very dead. I think that's going to do it, isn't it? I don't think that's going to be no much better. No point me rolling against that. So, although it's dead, I've got nothing else to um, move on to. There's nothing else in the original kill zone of that dead walker, so I can't use my other shots. So that's now dead. I've got to do the ammo check. Unfortunately, it's not reliable. So if this doesn't come up a shield, I'm wasting it to the next time. So I'm lucky this time. And then, uh, so that's not um, an ammo check. Mayhem. And now I've kicked out mayhem. So first thing to do threat is pop up. the threat. To so that's three now, now to three. Uh, now we have to check for anyone and all unengaged walkers that are within range. So I have got it just right with that. I am very lucky. So that's the first one. He's already on area terrain. So we'll see if he gets to move. And what we'll say is shield he can move. Sometimes you have to check to see which way around it is, but it's declared. 
So shield, he can move. So these are the normal rules from the green... This is just a normal uh, one. You've got to check... Farm with some on. of the 50-50 rules, you've got to check which way round and what it yeah. means. But if it's declared before, it's the same result. So he can move, but he's going to halve his uh, range. So through that, that's going to cost him four. So he's actually going to move two out the other side, which will still get him into combat with Thomas. Mm -hmm. So that's him. Uh, we'll see if there's anyone else. I think he's, no, just, he's just outside, mechanic dude. So we'll let him shamble towards... So moving that there without killing anyone else. I know we're oh, actually going to get close enough to kill them. That's going to come in on the next yeah. time. So it's going to be short this time, but he is going to come in. So I yeah. have sacrificed him, but hopefully I can gun them all down on the next go. And that's it, um, isn't it? There's mayhem. no one else. So I've got off quite lightly. This is one of the things I've noticed with the, the bigger board and causing mayhem. The grenades are less powerful. Yeah. Um, bit more space, isn't it? Bit more space. You pull less walkers. Yeah. So we, just to note, we started off with the 14 normal walkers and the armored walker in there. So it is less than you'd expect, but we've got a 90 minute time limit and seven turn time limit. So we've got to try and get cracking. Right, so we have done all the activations now. So we will check for kill zones. The only one I can see is the armored walker so who's going to come in and I'm gonna... probably take out young Thomas. Yeah. Old Thomas, in fact. So we just wanted to showcase all the uh, nice purple dice we've got, really. Yeah, there will be another one here where this one will come on to Scott. Good. So this is the card we get for the first round, so the herd. We are in low, uh, all quiet actually now, we've gone down. So player with initiative chooses a walker and moves it in a direction of their choice. All eligible walkers within eight inches of the chosen walker then also move, converging on the chosen walker. Right, there's not a huge amount that I want to do, but I might take some walkers over here. For instance, this one, mm -hmm. I might take him into Harold. Yep, and because he's already touching, he's going to yep. shamble around. And obviously that he's will draw any others within eight inches of the walker. So that's a run distance, and of that walker we've got that one. Yep. He's already touching the building, he's going to come towards that walker, which is going to shamble him that way, without taking out the cart. I'll take Mr Dreads as well. And he is, and his shamble distance is going to be there to there. Yep. So he's just going to be short, and we've already done the kill zone check, yeah, so we'll stop so him get that just short of that one. Um, but I think that was your limit for anyone within 8 inches of yeah, that walker the rest are not engaged. Out. So a couple more heading over towards Dan's side of the table, mm -hmm. giving things up for me. So we're going to start doing combats. Because uh, there's combats this round, the threat has gone up by 1 to 4, which is the first point of the low threat. And we'll start with this combat here, because it looks like the one to get most damage and give me some satisfaction. Thomas, yeah, this is going to be apart. quite brutal. So what you get when they're all walkers, you get one for the first, you get two for the second, and you get three for your third. So you're going to be rolling six in total, and that's the, <laughs> the outnumbering bonus. If walkers could make that sort of noise, so they would. So you're up against my uh, hopefully lucky blue-white with reroll. Because it's a sharp weapon, and I've got stab, I get to reroll what so I get. So it's a blue for the katana that you've been getting, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It is. Okay, so let's see what the walkers do. Instant death. Oh, Ooh. that's terrible! This is very survivable. Oh, that is terrible. Just three. I'm guaranteed one from the blue. I'm guaranteed one, so we'll see how bad this is. Oh, yeah. no! I am disappointed. Just no kills, however, I can knock one down, so... Knock off the three, I'm left with one hit point yeah. to allocate. So I can allocate it, so it makes most sense for me to push them all back, but to drop the um, yeah. armoured walker. So they all go oh, back an inch. Oh dear. So we're going to knock that one back. He's still standing, or is it she? Sorry, she's still standing. That one goes back an inch. That one goes back an inch. And we'll push this back as directly for the full inches as it can without knocking Thomas back, put him back where he was. And then we will put a pro marker on him, because then it's easier to see. So we're trying to use pro markers wherever possible, because what you start getting is a, a weird footprint of the walker down there that stops uh, movement yeah, around them. It should be. It's bigger than it should be. So we're putting that, you can see that there would be a place to get around, and you wouldn't necessarily see it that way. So that's the reason for using the pro markers. Mandy do sell pro markers, but then you have to take your model off to replace it. So it just it's quite useful just to put a little thing like we've got here that's next to it instead. So hurrah, survived. Hmm, that's far more disappointing. I don't like those purple dice anymore. <laughs> Okay, right. Well done, Paul. Where next? Where next? Well, let's go one on to Scott. Let's see what Scott can do, shall we? So, so is he going to attack? So he's got he his chain. He will attack with his chain. He can attack with his so chain. So he gets his one base and an extra one for his chain. And he's uh -huh. up against one walker. Yeah, so here we go. Oh, oh, he's done well, he's done well. The boy yeah. done good. Can't do it. Can't, Can't do, do it on a, uh, a purple die. So that is a walker gone. So bye bye. Kill with Couldn't the do you before, but 
has got rid of you now. It was two practice rounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Scott Moon he, takes. He got his eye in. <laughs> That's the sort of thing he needs. Shall we go on to this combat, this one here? So I have Eugene. He has a base of a white and a red. And because he's got Rick's hatchet, he's going to add another white. So he's white, white, red. Okay, it's a single purple, because we're using the purple here. It's also a sharp weapon, and he has stab. So I'll get to reroll all of these, should I need to. All of them? All oh. of them, should I need okay. to. Okay, let's see what you do. So we'll see what my attack is. And uh, stop it. I don't think you need to re-roll any. We're going to roll the purple dodger to yeah. show off the beautiful teeth again. So but that is a dead walker. That is a dead bye walker. Bye-bye. Thinning the walkers out, seriously. Right. Now we're going to jump onto Shiva. Shiva should do some filth, Shiva I think. Shiva is good. So she is a blue-red basic. And she's okay. against one walker. Any special rules for Shiva? Yes, but only if she wins. Only if she wins. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, jeez. So I need two. Not the best. I don't get two. So she is one. She's uh, caused pushback and prone. So... Goes over this so way, I'll push it that way. We're going to prone, and because you have won, is it Furious Assault is the keyword? Yep. Which means you can attack again any walker within six inches. The same one? Uh, it says, I think it actually specifies another, and that's prone, so it's got to be a standing, standing enemy. Okay, so this one looks like it's within six yeah, inches. That will be within. Yeah, that's yep. a shamble. So we zone. will go and attack this one. Let's see what she can munch we'll see on if there. We can do better here. So it's the same again. I've just realised I didn't do Sophia last time. Ah, okay. We'll do better to a sec. We'll just sneak it somewhere. Oh, another not massive. Come on, Shiva. Ooh. She does the same, so another knock down, push back and knock down, but could really have done with eating at least one of those, I would think. But anyway. Let's hope for some shields on the stand ups. There she is. Uh, last combat for the round will be over at Harold, who's got two walkers against him. So his basic is white, white, and I've given him the claw hammer for another white. And he has a small knife, so he is getting to reroll one of those. Um, and if we haven't mentioned it before, one of the Winter's End rules we've got, you may have noticed from the loadouts, is that each person can only have, across the whole crew, one weapon. So you can't have multiple claw hammers, multiple crossbows, multiple small knives. It's just to try and mix it up and use some of the cards, equipment cards, you wouldn't normally yeah, use. Yeah, because you used to see people doing just crossbows all the time and not using lots of different weapons. You don't want to come up against a five crossbow team. Yeah. So it's just to try and mix it up and try and uh, change that. So I'm attacking, so I should roll first. So I've got my three whites. Um, I will Ooh. might be rerolling one of them. I know I'm safe to reroll at least one. Oh, the, no, I'm not safe I've got roll. three dice. I'm against two walkers. Yeah, so that. three dice for the walkers. Oh, three with it. So I'm safe. But it's I'm fine. safe. I'm definitely going to win this combat, so I'm going to reroll and see if I can kill one. Yeah, reroll so one I, of those ones. Match. No, uh, I've got the same, same again. So just the explanation, if that had come back on a blank, because I've seen this go wrong, yeah. that is a draw, because the bite would only come in if there, there were yes. more hits. So it's just to explain that one. Absolutely, that yeah. one. It's not an extra hit. It's slightly odd, because when you shoot with a... Uh, a normal character, yep. it can count as an extra. It can cause an extra wound, but it's not an extra hit wind. at that, yeah, that yeah. point. So it's just that. So I've won the combat, I've got one wound to allocate, so one push back and one down. So, push um, so I, am probably, I can't push that one back, so that's going to come round there, isn't it? And that's going to go back that way. So we'll try and do it as much as possible. So that can't really go back. That one. So the easiest way of settling this one is to move me back. And we'll prone that one. So Harold's moved back because the walkers couldn't, and yeah. then that one goes pro. So it is a little bit fiddly at times when you're trying to move him around, so if it's easier, sometimes it's best just to move your sort of character back. So there should be separation of at least one inch after the combats. That's the, uh, the rule. So at the end of the round, we've done the prones uh, test already. So this guy has stayed prone, and so has the armoured one, but all the others have stood up. <laughs> So Craig's going act, to activate, he's going to sacrifice himself, and he's going to run over here and drag that walker away to try and create a channel for me. But because he's going to get himself tied up, his first action will be to try and hold his nerve. He's only got low nerve, so I don't want this tracking up on the threat meter. Okay. So we'll see if he can hold it. He does. he does. So I reduce it back to all quiet. Although I've got the initiative this round, it's still better for me and my low mm -hmm. sort of nerve team to do that. So that was his first action. Action number two, I've got to make sure that this is still the nearest walker once he's done a noisy short jog over here. And that will still be my nearest walker. So this one will shamble directly towards him. So he's sacrificed himself a little bit and see if he survives this. I am going to activate first with Amy, who is going to give an action to Andrea again. And then I am going to 
just sneak her in this direction. She's going to go over here. She isn't quite touching that um, item yet, but she's going to wait there at Resource Hub. So Eugene's going to do a move that's going to drag this walker away. So he's also going to his test his nerve first. So we'll just see what he gets. He doesn't this nope. time. But well, I've measured the move just before, and he's going to run through here, over to here. That creates noise. That's going to pull that walker who's hiding by the trees. So we'll see if he can move first. So we'll see if he does. He can move. Does. A shield, so he can move. So and he's going to get there. Okay. So let's tie him up. I am now going to activate with Andrea, who's going to spend two actions reloading her crossbow. And then she is going to shoot this walker opposite her with the um, behind the car. So the benefit of being behind a car, of course, but we should still be all right. So it'll be the usual uh, one white and two red. Uh, three. three red, sorry, yeah, big part. Yeah, so I'm going to get four. cover. So rather than it yeah. taking away yours, it's going to add cover to me. Uh, so, oh, no headshot, so just three, so I've got that's still good. the benefit of the car, and I've got my normal defence, so if I can defend three, I can't, I've defended two, right. so I'm so down. down. There's no pushback to the shot, so it's just down where he is, so okay. Mr Mechanic is down, making sure uh, I can't shamble anyone into aim. do, of course, need to check for my... Uh, I don't need to check for ammo because I'm getting headshots, yep. but I do need to check for noise. Yep. Not that noise is actually going to make any difference because make everyone difference. is going to be prone. So I'll roll it just to show again that crossbows make noise in this game, in this version. So it doesn't be actually quiet. make that noise. Would be quiet. But even if it had caused noise, there isn't actually anyone who's standing up nearby enough to do anything. So I'm going to activate Thomas. He's a tactician, so he doesn't need to roll to hold his nerve. He's automatically going to drop it down. So we're down to? Down to two. Um, and then he is going to sneak into combat here with a view to finishing off that armoured walker. Yes, because now that he's prone and in combat, you can kill him straight away, cast the headshot mm -hmm. immediately. I don't need to go through that uh, yeah. right gear. I and obviously, you can't kill him with headshots from range anyway no. because of the helmet. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just going to move Ezekiel. He is going to run to here. He does create noise, but there's no one within range to respond to that noise, so that's okay. And then he will search the resource point. So I will turn over a card, top card is, oh, of course. <laughs> of course it is. So he has to deal with a lurker, okay. He does get the resource, but he obviously doesn't get anything useful from so it. Two, okay. two walker dice, let's see what I can do. Yeah. Two, and Ezekiel is surviving on three red. He's oh, fine, he's, he's fine. fine. Dan was just reminding me to say that for the winter's end, if you've got a pack size of three, you can take up to three resources from the field. Um, if you've got a pack size of one, like Sophia has, then she'll only be able to get the one. Harold is going to activate. He's going to run around this side. I've worked out that that keeps me outside of that shamble range. Um, so this one created noise. It's the nearest unengaged walker. He's going to come and fight him. So he's quite powerful one on one. I don't want to try and fight three of them at any one stage. Very sensible. That's not a good thing to do. I am going to activate uh, Scott, who is going to move here, and he is also going to check the supplies, which is nothing. Which is but it's not a lurker. Little, okay. <laughs> so he has done his action. So he has done his action. So Dan only has Charlie left, but he is probably one of his best characters. Mm. So I'm just going to check for, you're allowed to check at any stage, so there's no one to be pulled in by Mayhem, which is good news. So I am free to shoot. And what I'm thinking of doing, I have a range of 18 inches. <laughs> so I know that's quite a long way for the 24, but I want to stay outside of Andrea's range. But I just need to make sure that I've got a clear shot outside of this base. So I'm using the lasery. It's I a think that it's going to be very tight not to get shot back. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lay You were going to shoot young Amy, weren't you? I was. I was very tempted. Do you know what I am going to do? I'm going to Horrible. shoot your kitty. What? I've got a clear shot there. 
Uh, yeah, through the prone one, as long as you move, obviously. To... So I'm going to move. Yeah. That's my sneak. That shot was available. Yeah, because prone doesn't uh, count. I was giving you. So anything. I am on. There is a. He's a. Charlie's got a special rule of pick them off. So if there's not a friendly survivor next to Shiva, uh, eight inches away, I get an extra blue. But you've uh, thankfully managed to avoid that. Thankfully, Scott so is still there. I've got a blue and I've got a white. Scott is worth something after all. It apparently, is. it's coming handy. So I'm going to get two shots, um, and it's armor piercing. So I'm going to knock a dice off your well, defense. I have a white and a. Uh, Red, so I'm going to drop the red, of course. So my armor piercing. So my first attack. Oh, oh I'm dear! Fire. I'm fine. Shiva's not going to lie. So she gets two. So that's three and a headshot. Four, they get through. Five. So, so you're for shooting both. Oh yes. Come through for melee only one. So you've defended two, but yeah. that headshot comes across here. So I've actually got five, five wounds. Let's see how many wounds she's got. Let's count them down. Right here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Out. So she may well survive. She is not happy about that in the slightest. Who shoots a pet? I've got to check Jesus. for ammo, so let's see if I get another shot. Right, you deserve. You deserve. On you a, deserve to on not a get shield. Out. On a shield. Oh, uh, out of ammo. Uh, out of ammo. So you're safe. So you should. You just emptied the entire. So at that point, I've caused mayhem. So once your shots are done, so ammo checks after each shot, and I'll just tick that over. Oh, we've got a nice little uh, thing there. Yeah. Um, so we're now on three, it went up with Mayhem. Um, I've already cleared out that there's no one within range to pull in, so that would be the end of Charlie's turn. I'm just going to turn his weapon over to remind me I need to reload it on the next go with the bandolier. The heavily wounded Shiva is going to move over here, going to run over here. I'll get some protection from the wood at least. Um, but I'm sort of still there because I want to get close to that armoured walker because he's going to have to drag that away in a minute. But that will make noise. This one's prone, so that won't matter. But it will pull this walker across. So this one will shamble closer towards Shiva, and that will clear a path for Sophia there to go and start doing some stuff. So there, there, yeah, and that's just outside of kill zone for Shiva as well. And then um, Dan's all finished anyway, so I'll carry on and finish my action. So Sophia will now move to here, uh, which I think was in. Sneak, yeah, sneak range, and then she will look what's under that supply, and that is some football pads. That is exactly what Sophia wanted for Christmas, so she's super pleased to get that. One size fits all as well. It fits <laughs> it's Tyrese, it fits, fits Sophia. All, yeah. uh, so she's going to have that, and more importantly, she has her pack is now full because she only has a pack size of one. The important thing to point out now is you have three supplies. Yes. So that is worth one scenario point. Mm -hmm. If you get an extra supply, so once you've got four, that's two scenario points. So yeah. there's potential three for grabs with the armoured walker. There's one here as well, remember. And on each of them, on each of the scenarios, um, you'll get one if you've got three supplies, and you get two scenario points if you've got up to four supplies. So that's a really good idea because it, it really encourages you to play the scenario, but you can still win or at least compete even if you uh, are losing the scenario. Yeah, you, you yeah. can nullify. So if you've got, uh, if you wipe out some of the opponents and you have half your crew left and you've got four supplies, that's three scenario points. If I manage to drag that off the board, yeah. I only get three and we get a five all draw. Yeah, so yeah. if you just want to wipe out your uh, opponent, you're only going to get a six four win. So it's a minor victory. So you mm -hmm. need to play the scenarios. You need to go for supplies. You need to good. play the game. Right, so at the end of all the activations, uh, we are going to uh, do the event. So Dan, do you want to roll it? So there was no kill zones, there was no... No kill zones to do, no yeah, so we didn't, we didn't do that because we checked how it went along. So we're going to do the event and we've got roamers. Roamers, okay. So we're on all quiet, we're still on three. So each player moves one eligible walker in a direction of their choice. Hmm, okay, but this is after kill zones, remember, so that's yes. important. So Dan, which walker would you like to move? Let me guess. <laughs> hmm, decisions, decisions. Um, I was only just checking to see if there was one I can move away that stops mm. you moving it into me, but I think we did check that that shouldn't be able to reach me before, so I will try and tie up. See yep. if there's a, what a an surprise. outside there's chance an outside of Shiva chance. getting it. And I will move... I'm going to move Reggae Reggae um, over towards Craig. That's a good there. shout. Do you want to move that one because that's closer to get? I think that will get past yeah, that. Yeah, right. Hitting. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's so fine. we'll say yeah, that. So he might actually. Through. Yeah. And it's going to get there. Oh, so that's. Yeah, so that was there. Okay. 
Right, uh, the um, threat goes up by one because there is combat. And then on four, which is low threat. Okay, and let's choose some combat stuff. So we'll go through, it's my initiative, so we'll go through here. We've got Craig. Craig is going to defend with his two red. He has okay. a riot helmet, which means he can ignore right. a bite. So against one walker, Just I'm not going to get walker. bitten. Well, not doing so anything. So nothing to defend, so I'm not even going to roll. And I managed to push back, so it goes back that inch. So that's a uh, pushback. Yep. Next combat. So next combat we've got Harold. So I know that Harold is a three white with a one reroll. Jeez, that's good, isn't it? Three white. Wow. Um, and that's against one Walker. So this should be okay. Ooh. I may as well just reroll that now. But I only get one. I'm anyway. gonna win the combat. But let's see if we can kill. No. I can't kill, um, but I can knock you prone. So just push back and prone so again. Push back and prone. We'll go to about there, and that'll be fine. Oop, go back. Was that other one not prone? No, it's, I defended it. Yeah. I All defended right. it. Um, so we'll go to Thomas. This is yeah. the one that counts for me. So he is a blue white, and you've got two um, uh, two red, two defense. Come on. Yeah, two purple, I should say. Yeah. So right, he's defending first. This is important. Uh, Just one. So if I beat that, I've killed it. Yeah. Come on. Uh, well, I didn't need the headshot, but gets it anyway. That blue has not let me down today, no, has it? No, it's not. So we're going to put a activation token just so we know that is now officially dead. Yeah. If nothing else changes and no one takes control of it with that special action, I'm up one uh, scenario point, mm -hmm. but you've got a one to cancel me out with your yeah. supplies. Yeah. So we are equal, so I need to start taking control and dragging it off if I want to up my game. So you get one for having killed it? That, that one can be superseded but if someone gets a two. So if you take control of it, ah, my one's gone. Right, okay. If you get it off the board, you've got three and my yeah, one's yeah, gone. Yeah. The one only counts unless it gets superseded by okay. something else. Good. Next so combat. That's why it throws you into the scenario. Yeah, next combat. So next combat, um, there wasn't a pushback phase because that was prone, so I yeah. am still in contact with it. So the next one is I'm on a white, white, red. So this is, that Eugene. is Eugene. And Eugene is um, stab with a sharp, so he mm -hmm. rerolls all of them. So I can re-roll that, and I may be mm. re-rolling them all. So let's wait and see what I get. So oh, nothing, so I may as well re-roll them all. Yeah. So he's got a dirty fighter tactic, right. so I've Kills. got the kill. Kills that. So that was that. important. So that has... And then the only other combat to do is against Shiva. Oh, come on, kitty kitty. So Shiva will fight, because she's way better at that. She is. So that's a red and a blue for Shiva. And obviously she'll be able to trigger her ability, but... This is where I say it's different. hard to lose. Yeah. Just... So we get it on camera. Oh. There we go. Look at that. That's she what was she good. Does best. That's now best. she finally pulls out the good stuff. But the downside is she can't really use her special ability because she can only move six inches to somebody else. But it's there is standing. they have to be standing, and everybody is lying Just down in range, distance. I'm afraid so that's a bit of a shame. She can't bounce onto someone else. But even so, she's okay. Well, she's incredibly sick, but she's okay. <laughs> she's <lying. laughs> Um, so we'll do the wrap up and stand ups. Yeah, and we'll roll them off camera for saving time. So at the end of round two, the only walker that stood up was this one, and there's no infection test, so we are going to go into round three. And the initiative will be back to me. <coughs> so my first action is to put the cat amongst the pigeons, so to speak. I'm going to charge with she, we've already measured out. She goes through this wood a little bit, but she's still got plenty of distance, and she's going to hit Thomas there. Because she doesn't want him running away with that corpse that we, for some reason, desperately need. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Shiva done. Oh, and that will make noise, of course. We're having a run, which will pull the nearest. Yes. Oh, that's actually not too bad, is it? Ooh, and I'll probably nice. bump the car, I, I think. I don't know if that's going to bump Ooh. him. Do we do it from the centre of him? That yeah, it's just, it's just going to touch the back of Harold, isn't it? That's a really yeah. good move. Ooh. I'm better at this than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy's last move was really good, because what I need to do is gang up on Shiva, so I can then get control of the walker, because I can't use Thomas. He, he's been tied up. So I was going to move Harold round and join him with Eugene. Um, and absolutely smash uh, Shiva. So what I'll do now is I'll activate Eugene. He's going to hold his nerve to try and get it back to all quiet, as it's not my initiative. I don't want a bad event knocking things. Oh, yeah, so I have managed to do that. All quiet is a better event for me when it's not with my control. And then I can sneak into range with Shiva. Join in the fight. I am just going to sneak this little uh, person, Amy. So <laughs> I'm just going to sneak Amy up to there and look inside that supplies it's an ammo reload oh that might be handy to give to her sister shortly 
Right, but she's quite happy with that. So that actually takes me to four items as well now, which is worth two victory points in the Winter's End scenario pack. Ooh. So I need to get in on the supply action. So what I'm going to do is I know that the distance there, we've pre-measured it, Craig's going to run round. That has caused noise. Um, but I needed to get in a little bit more. So what I want to do is drag that walker into Harold rather than Craig. So I've got an activation token. So if it was there, when he tries to come in, it's actually going to clip Harold before it gets to Craig. Um, and then it allows me free to search. We've got no one who's um, mm -hmm. ever able to stop that. So that goes to Craig. He's got two pack, so he's fine. Not that two rapper. pack. <laughs> two pack. He's got, um, a dead, he's got a dead rapper. Ta -da! Really. Isn't it meant to be alive somewhere on a beach? Uh, <laughs> thing other news. So we've got a metal pipe for Craig, which will go nicely with his riot helmet, so he can have that bludgeon weapon. Um, and that is Craig out of there. So I'm trying to get some supplies back, but I need to get to three supplies to get one scenario point. Yeah. And so you've only got. Uh, oh, that's my first. I haven't really bothered. Yeah, yeah. So you've only got Charlie left to go. Yes. Hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to activate Ezekiel. He is going to donate one action to Scott. Uh, and then he's going to run. We've already measured this two inches there. And then the rest of his move up to there. That's a run. That creates noise, which pulls this walker just into the series of railings there. So Charlie's weapon's out of ammo. So turn one with his bandolier. He's going to reload his AR-15. And with his second action, he's going to see if he can reduce threat. So he'll hold his nerve, and he does. Well, you've made that about four times out of five, bad, haven't you? Not bad. Yeah. So we're down to two. So yeah. it's still all quiet, but I'm trying to keep it nice and low, so I don't end the, the game prematurely. I'm going to I'm going to activate Scott Moon, the man, the legend. Going to move in there, and then he is going to attack that walker with his chain from three inches away. He's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Well, it's terrible, but anyway. Uh, so you get two red to attack with. Oh, go Scotty Moon. Look at that. Come on. Oh. Ah, blanked it out, blanked it out. Bye-bye, Walker. So one Walker dead. And then... He's a legend, isn't he? He's a legend. Do you know what? He's going to run in and attack this one. Oh, he's actually going to... He do, he's going to sneak. He doesn't need to run, but there's no benefit of him running. So he's going to run in so that he'll hopefully be able to kill that one on the ground. It would be just within, so you did want to do a sneak. Yeah, you yeah. Want to drag that so, one in. Uh, then hopefully I'll be able to kill that one on the ground, because if he does stand up, he's a bit too close to Amy, and he could mess my plans up if he stood up. And that's it. Uh, da uh, Dan is all finished on his side. So what have we got left? We've got Sophia over here, and we've got Andrea. Andrea really wants to get herself in a position where she can do something nasty. So she is going to run over here to her sister and she's going to take the ammo reload off of her sister. Really? Can she do that? Oh, it costs, costs yeah, yeah, because we just picked that one up. I'm sorry, I didn't see no. that. So she gets no. that so that she can benefit. And now she's also in the inspiring leadership range for Amy as well. So next round, she potentially gets free actions. And of course, even if she blows her crossbow, she has the option of reloading for the shoot the next round. And then finally, Sophia. Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Doesn't have it all. Oh, doesn't have a lot to do except I've just seen. I didn't even realize that was there. She has an item mm. there that she could use. But she doesn't need to rush for this. Uh, in fact, she can't carry two. Let's give it to someone else first. Mm. And this is the dilemma that it creates because a lot of people use Sophia yeah. as a very cheap runner. So now you've got to work effectively as a team. Can I drop one? Uh, so to speak. You, <laughs> you can. <laughs> I might drop the one she's got. Drop the football pads. Yeah. You don't, sorry, you don't need to drop the. Uh, Not the pad, just the item. Yeah. Just the token. All right. Do actually. But that would be a swap um, items action. I will move her there and I will leave that on the floor because actually I think I can get Scott Moon or someone back over here or even Amy I reckon in the turns. Yeah. That has theoretically thrown away a victory point but I'm happy I can get back either way with her. So. Okay. So we just check kill zones. There are none because everybody's either in or prone. And then we will check the event card. So, the hunger. Plus one threat for a start. So that takes us from two up to three. But we're still in all quiet. The walkers suddenly stop. Nothing happens. 
Well, that was very dull, wasn't it? And that's the reason for <laughs> threat management. So. Yes, because even if it had been low, we'd have had one person move, which actually, with it currently being, wouldn't have made any real difference. But, you know, it could have made a huge difference if we'd been slightly different setup. <laughs> right, so on to combats. And your initiative. I'm going to do the one I like the most, and that's Scott Moon. Come on, Scott, you can do it. Full Moon. Scott Moon, yeah, go Full Moon on it. Go Full Moon on it. Right, he gets his two red. Ah. Oh, for God's sake, Scott. It's prone, so I um, don't need to do anything. No, but it's just not you can't it. even kill something that's lying on the floor, Scott. Lying there, wriggling. <laughs> what is the point? Now, interestingly, this is a good point. Because it's prone, there's no pushback. Mm. If, if you roll a shield, that's going to stand up and engage Scott <laughs> the next turn. <laughs> and you will deserve that, Scott. You will yeah, deserve that's it. That's a good point there. Okay. Right, let's go on to... Let's do the simpler fight first. Let's do So Harold. that is three white against three purple. All right. So I get to re-roll one of mine. So okay. a white die is a better die than the uh, purple or red. Um, and I'm attacking, so I'll see what I get. That's not, not a bad, bad. start. Not not a bad start. One of those ones, and I, I do. Oh, no, um, no, 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 no. Let me just see what my... I've only got two. So you might as well re-roll one to see if you can get an exclamation mark. So he's got the muscle, so he inflicts an extra point anyway. But let's see if I can kill somebody. Yep. So I re-roll that. I don't, nope. so I've knocked them both down. So I've both got, ended up with down. five and the, the muscle. And that's not too bad, because so that clears the way. Give me clearance. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going that way, aren't I? So that's that one prone. That's that one prone. So let's get some prone mark. Okay, so here is Shiva. Shiva's dying to meet you guys, and probably dying, so I get a red and a blue, but here is Dan's dice. So that's from Thomas, yep. and that is from Eugene. Uh, they're both sharp weapons with stab, so I'm going to re-roll all of them. Anything from these ones that cause a crit, I'm going to get an extra red. Okay, so let's roll for Eugene first, shall we? So Eugene, let's see what he gives me. So he's not going to give right. me the Rick Hatchet at this time until I re-roll. Um, and Thomas, Thomas is going to give me Ooh. quite a lot to... But I need to roll mine. Move. One dead kitty. Yeah, it beats me by one. So which I is don't all need to do any more. I could add insult to injury. Because it's Shiva, yeah. she's not going to come back as a walker, so I'm not forced to re-roll and yeah. try and kill. So bye we'll bye, go. Shiva. That's from that excellent shot before, which has done all the damage. But we tied you up for a turn, which is did, what was did. important. If you look really closely, you can see the tears running down Ezekiel's face. We didn't roll it on camera, but this one stayed down. Scott Moon lives to fight another day. Well, to flounder around for another day anyway, but, you know, bless him. So I'm going to activate Charlie. What we've just spotted here is there's a sneak range that gets him to right to the edge, and he can just get past Amy's defence there. No. So oh, she's going to leap although, in front. Like although, a... though, no, let me think about this. I can run, and the reason for running is I've got an automatic uh, an assault, so I need to be within six. So what I need to do is make sure I'm, I'm definitely within six anyway. So yep. I've, I've just done enough. So you so get a bonus of shooting to get again. A bonus of the third shot in case I um, yep. so I can pummel you with it. Um, you're going to get the benefit of the extra red from Amy, but I've got an armor piercing, so we're going to lose one. So I've got a blue red attack. And you should have two red defense because you've lost one red to yep. the armor piercing. So attack number one against Andrea is only three. Yeah. So that's cool. one, one, one wound. Damp, one wound. Same shot again. Uh -huh. Ooh, only two. And she loves it. Come on. Third shot. Oh, oh. this is the one. It's not going to kill her. So, so that is three, total four, of three, four with the exclamation total. mark. And so because of that, I now need to trigger up a few different Let's things. Let's just do her so damage we'll do first. Damage. So she goes one, two, three, four. She is just about alive. That is such is a shame fine. because I should have finished her off really. Yeah. But that's so you're out of ammo. So out of ammo. He is out of ammo, so let's do that now. Let's turn his gun over so we know that. Um, it has caused uh, mayhem. mayhem, so we need to move up. We were, I think we were there, so we're on to four. Uh, uh, let's see if again, it has minimal effect because I don't think anyone is standing up. <laughs> no one in range is standing up at all, so you can cause mayhem as much as, as you wish. Like. So, yeah. there we go. So first action, I'm going to activate Amy, who is going to donate a... Um, one of her actions to her sister, Andrea, and then I am going to move Amy here onto this prone walker to hopefully do better than what Scott did before. 
So, because Charlie's left himself a bit stranded, I need to force the issue and make um, Andrea think about something else. So I'm going to take control. So there's a special action in this scenario with an eligible survivor, and an eligible survivor is a healthy adult. So that basically means no kids. So if it's got the Just for Kid rule, or you know it's a child from the comic books, that's uh, not going to be. So no Sophia's, no Dwayne's, uh, no Billy and Ben. Um, can't be Shiva, so no Beast rule can't be a mounted, so you can't be on a horse and drag it, and also you can't be amputated, so no uh, peg leg Dale. So that's it's still lots of people, though I've given you loads of uh, exclusions, and we'll put that on the screen of what that actually is. So first action is to take control, and that means I now do my normal sneak range, that's the maximum you can move, you can't run while dragging it, so I can use my normal um, sneak range, but I've just got to be conscious of the shot coming through here, so I'm going to go back this way and that gets me to there, and then what you do is you reposition the uh, walker at the end of it, and the walker actually gives you white cover. So you can still shoot me because it's prone, but I'm getting white cover because I'm angling the walker ah, to try and defend myself. Yeah. I'm going to charge Ezekiel. He's, through his tears, he can see and runs all the way round into one of the murderers, one of the murderers of his beautiful pet. Going to run into Eugene and initiate a combat with Eugene. I think that's what we're going to do. It's not a sneak to go around the car. So I will activate Craig. There's no one to worry about for noise. We're too far away. So yeah, that's why we're into just that. out of uh, sneak Ooh, range. Well, there was some noise from Eugene, uh, Ezekiel, actually, before we did that. One second. So Ezekiel did make some noise. This one will show... He's not... He's, he's is he touching the car? the car? Yeah, he wasn't touching the car, so he's going to move stopped. just there. No, good point. Um, so I will activate Craig. Um, he will run, and then let me just check that you've not brought it any closer now. That is. Yeah, it's going to bring it a little bit so further. that is good. So it will now move its... not going to quite reach the combat, but... It's not, but it could kill zone. I think it's to there. Yeah, possibly. It might be just on the outside edge, we'll see. You're going to get tag teams. Oh, no, never mind. Tag teams, marvellous. So I will do the search. It's a new um, supply, so we'll see what I get. I get an ammo reload. Yeah, I helpful. don't really need, I'm just going to throw it down just for this purpose. I don't need yeah. to hold on to it. But I will take that one. The reason for going for that one is I'm now on two. I need the third one to get my um, yeah. scenario point for supplies. What we will do is we will do Sophia, who will sneak onto this one. And she will see what that is. It is a old gun. She's been wanting an old gun for Christmas. Amazing. Football so she has and a gun. Football pass and a gun. She is tooling herself up. Very American. Because she dropped her pack, she now has um, an empty pack, and she can pick up that last one. So, so we're she actually is done. equal. I've got two because I'm controlling the walker, but you've got two scenario points because you've got. Yeah. Um, so I need to do some killing. To try and drop so, Harold, you're next, son, you're the last character to I go. I believe so. So, I'm going to activate Harold. I've just measured out. There's just enough space to get him through there because I can't get around that prone. It's just too tight there. So, I've measured that that's my run. I can't quite get to the supply this turn, but that does pull this walker into me for a combat to try and clear out the way. Okay, so the last action I have... Oh, I have two actions. I've got Scott Moon and then I've got Andrea. We can just skip Andrea. We don't really need to... Skip Andrea. Skip Andrea, you mad. Now, Scott Moon has three actions because I gave one from Ezekiel. I don't know if I remember to say that. Can't quite get where I wanted to get. Ah, I've got three actions. What am I doing? I am going to run to there. Where's he going to get to? He's here. OK, yeah, because that will pull that one. That will, pull, that will then pull this one into yeah. the car. Good point. Then I will sneak back round to here. Which you can do. And then I will search that vehicle, because so that, that walker is not in contact with the car. So Scott will pick up this one. And it is... It doesn't really matter what... Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it matters a lot to me. It's a lurker. Great. Yay. Let's see what, Great. The walk, what right. the walk can do. Let's have a look. Yeah. Does he do anything? Oh, no. No. oh it's only a one. Uh, I can defend with my chain, can't I? Yes, you yeah, get two so. red defense. Oh, I didn't yeah. do anything, so I am wounded. 
So Scott he hasn't got many wounds, but he goes fight. down, that's so not that's not bad at all. No, and he bad. is on his pack is full as well. And more importantly, he has taken one that Dan needs away, at yes. least some distance away. And interestingly, one of the ending conditions is to have six um uh, supplies would end the game. So, so there's different five. ways the game can end. Killing all the walkers ends it. Yep. Getting the armoured walker off the edge. Yep. Threat getting all the way. Or having six of them. So there's okay. multiple ways to end the game. I don't think I'm going to get all six because I had to leave that one all the way over there, yeah. of course. So I need to stop Amy or yeah. anyone else getting across to it. Amy would have to run from here all the way over there, which is very unlikely to happen. But anyway. But we are oh, one action left, so we're going to do something horrendous to this little... Beast, you've shot my cat. Yes. So, Andrea is going to aim, and then she is going to shoot Charlie. <laughs> He's going right. to kill Charlie. Okay. Charlie only has a red defence. So she gets a white and a red base. She then gets two more red for her crossbow, and then a white for having aimed. Is that right? Yes. Okay, come on. Let's hit our first decent roll. Oh, for oh. God's sake. <laughs> Can we defend it? Yeah! And I got that, terrible. got that on video. Got that on video. Right, let's see if she... The dice gods well, She doesn't smiling. need to test for ammo, no, at least. But she tested by make noise, not that it really matters. I do make noise. Uh, no, 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 that was good. That's, that's oh, yeah, one. sorry, I don't that's make noise. I beg your pardon. Right, I will repeat. I can't repeat. Um, you have three actions, so you've got... You could take off the aim yes, part, so I that's the advantage repeat. of Andrea. So she's probably going to pummel me with it. Yeah, yeah, it's a normal a shot now, shot. let's see. Still not great. It's not enough to kill you. you it's not going to kill me, but yeah. it's going to do some damage. And oh, one damage. One damage. One damage. Andrea. Wow. Really? Again, no need to uh, you test are for going ammo. To get it. But we will test for uh, noise. Does make noise this time. That's again using the Winter's End uh, scenario and that might pack. Be this, one. this one is in range of noise, so we'll pull that into the woods, uh, and then it will reduce its movement through the woods, won't yeah. it? So it starts halving at the point. It's going to get so. to about here. Okay, so what do you reckon? So it's going yeah, through. it's about that corner, we'll yeah. yeah. It's difficult with a tree there, but we'll just throw it there. Okay, look. Oh, that is disappointing, Andrea. You lined up a perfect shot. And that's why she was cut from the TV show. <laughs> Skybound production, nothing associated with NBC. <laughs> it's AMC, isn't it? Yeah. So there's no kill zones, we've just checked that this one has been pulled out actually. It would have been on Ezekiel before, but it's been moved out. So what do we have for our event? We have two quiet, so plus one threat anyway, which takes us from four to five. Still in low threat. The walk will suddenly stop and nothing seems to happen. Add one to the threat level, so it's an additional one. It's Whatever's written here is in addition to what's added up the corner up the top here. So it's actually a total of plus two threat. Yeah. Now we will do the... So that's going to go uh, combat again, again. So, so for melee, so yep. it's going to go up to seven. So we we'll have three so on the bounce there, which is the reason why I try and keep it lower because it, it has just ticked around quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect anyone just at the moment, but obviously next round it could easily get up into medium, and then people would start having to test. So let's do some combats. There really only is the one combat here, and then two zombie combats. So let's do the zombie ones first. Let's do uh, Harold first. So he's a three white with a reroll. So we'll roll him so we can kill it outright. No, he hasn't. He gets the reroll. He might as well roll the reroll now. And, well. and yeah. he's rubbish. Uh, and I only get one, so, so you push me away and down. So we'll go away. I've lost a. We'll just do one of those token yeah. ones. We'll just say that he's. Put the roll out, the prone, actually. Okay, uh, and then I am going to attack with. Oh, Amy can't even fight, actually. I didn't realise that. So she's not going to do anything. She's it's gonna prone, so she, she's going to tickle him. Yeah. Tickle him on the yeah. floor. This is going to dance around him, but yeah, I didn't even realise she didn't have a fight stat, so she can't even do anything, but never mind. Um, and then we've got a, a good uh, bruiser Big encounter here. here. So we've got a two white and a red. I've got a sneaky little um, dirty fighter. So if we draw, I'm going to add in a red. If you, um, if I roll any crits, headshots, I add one red. Okay. And I have got my Shikamizu, or whatever, however you say it, as a white dice, and if I score a... Uh, exclamation mark, I'll immediately add a bone red. But I've also got the keepsake, so that means I can automatically give myself or take away from Dan a um, exclamation mark. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. So you've got initiative, so you can roll. Right, so I have two white, one normal, and then one for the his staff. Ooh, okay. So that's okay. I'll probably need to yeah. consider adding So that's my it. basic roll, mm. which I am quite happy with. So, so adding an exclamation mark or taking one away doesn't add anything to this. So it's a straight fight. 
And I will lose by three. Yes. So let's take a damage for Ezekiel. He is going to go five, four, three, two, one. Uh, sorry, not too much. Yeah. There we go. And because I've got a sharp weapon, I'm going to roll on a shield. I'm going to do an extra um, damage point. Oh, right. Okay, we don't like that. I haven't done that yet. Oh, so we'll have right. that on. We'll have an extra one. So he's down to one as well. Every one of my characters gets down to one wound before they die. Well, I guess everyone gets down to one wound before they die, don't they? Um, we caused pushback. So let's move you back as the loser. Oh, ha, ha. Hey. Right, okay, and that is the end of the round. The only thing we need to do now is roll for the prone uh, walkers, and we'll do that in a second. So the ones of interest, this one stood up, so it's going to give Amy a bad time, and this one closest to Thomas stood mm. up, so that might have a factor, but I think Thomas is close to what he needs to be. This dude goes back to Dan for round six. <laughs> so I'm activating Charlie, because I'm amazed that he's still alive. Uh, he uh, ran out of ammo, so he's going to reload for turn one. Uh, we're still within assault range with a multiple shot weapon, um, so I'm going to roll a blue white three times and hopefully finish her off. <laughs> so we shall see. Turn one. Oh, uh, could do it. I don't think I can even beat that. Uh, that so it can't. Be. I've only got two red, so no, she is uh, she's in the kill zone. Um, but it's a, a yes. Yeah, so it's the armor piercing that took the yeah. one that she'd get from here off. Yeah. So she's gone with a headshot. So she's not coming back. But bye see, bye, Andrea. Let's see if that is um, Does it ammo. Create? Yeah, ammo. Uh, uh, good fine. for ammo. Um, Does create. It doesn't do that yet because it's not got a shot. The but, round. but 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 I don't think I'm allowed to shoot. Uh, so normally, because I've done a shot here yeah. within the kill zone, I could move it on. But you are protected by area terrain. So you can I'm, shoot that zombie if you want to. That walker who's. Uh, it's got to be within the kill zone, uh, yes, the original yeah. target. So I can't just suddenly switch it. So because I can't get through that area terrain, if I was in the area terrain, it would be a different matter. But I've got to end it. One there. kill is enough. One kill is enough. So I've caused mayhem. So we'll tick that on, and now we'll see if there's anyone within the. There it is. So that one stood up. So that is going to come into Thomas if I'm not careful. So I didn't look at that bearing. It's definitely going to hit Thomas. Yeah. That's going to hit, isn't it? So if we track this Ooh, way, that's going to mess you up this uh, round. That is not going to hit. That's weird. That it's not going to hit. You can come and check from this angle, but that's going to come through here and it's going to have hit there. That was a nat. But from this angle, you can see it from your angle. It probably looks like I cheated, but I, I know. I can we're on camera. I, I, we're on camera, I can swear to that. <laughs> so I was going to do an instant replay with that, but from this angle, I should have used the uh, the blue the, uh, the line. That was never going to hit. I'm not saying anything. It was I'm never going to hit. Anything. I can't even hold it steady. So no. that wasn't going to hit. So This one gets to move as well, though. Oh, right, so does it. So we'll say that on a shield, mm -hmm. it can move. Okay. It does. So it can move. They've, but it's only they've gonna all wandered move. through these woods uh, a lot. Haven't they? It's going to move three. Yeah. So it's going to be right, right in, the in the middle. So we're just going to lie him there. Yep. This one is locked in combat anyway, and that's and it. Don't know if there was prone. anyone they else. Were prone, so. so that was Charlie. Um, so no, I didn't get the benefit of the other two, but it took Andrea out. So what I'm looking to do, you've got six. I need to kill two more in order to get you uh, the bonus survival yep. point away from me. Okay. Uh, Andrea just ran over here, caused noise, but uh, sorry, Sophia just ran over here, caused some noise, but that doesn't make any effect because there's no walkers around, and we haven't had any new walkers in this game, have we? So. No, not but with the events. Mm. Um, so you... over to you. What's next, Dan? Marvelous. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit sneaky. So Harold's going to activate. Mm -hmm. I think the nearest eligible walker is going to be this one. So we're going to do a pincer uh, move. He's going to run Should've around about here. That. Because I need to try and kill Scott because I think he's holding two supplies which would drop. Uh, yeah, yeah, he should have um, done, should have moved him. That wasn't touching the car. No, actually, so it, will, so bump it that. will touch the car. So it's not quite as bad as I was hoping it would be for you. Yeah, that's But Harold silly. should uh, munch Scott in a second. Okay, right. Well, because of that, I'm going to use Ezekiel and charge Ezekiel into Ooh. there. Um, he would have to have run, actually, I think. I'm just going to pull that and split Which the will pull that one in and then split the combat. Yep. That one will come round onto Scott. Oh, good call. Yeah. So why not go for it? Let's have a big party over here. <laughs> so why doesn't Eugene run? He's not going to get to Scott, unfortunately, but he can run and get to there. Take out Zeke. He, yeah, so I can really munch him. Um, that has caused noise. The nearest one is probably the one in the woods. Is the only one who's not engaged. So oh, this one's not engaged. Uh, but that is closer. Not the nearest, closer. Yeah, yeah. So a shield, it can move. It can't move. It is stuck. So, in the so woods. stay in the woods. 
Uh, I am all out because um, Amy is locked in combat. <coughs> so, I have Craig. Craig would like some supplies. Um, who has the supplies? Amy has a supply. So I'm going to... I don't really get to her this round, though. Not this round. Um, so why not just add in for fun. Uh, he will try and reduce threat. He does. he does. Go down to seven, try and keep it down that way. Don't want any panic at this stage, and he's going to go for mm -hmm. Ezekiel. That also causes noise, so see if this walker comes out of the woods again. That's not a good point. Yes. Right. It won't go so, far, even if it does. No. Uh, it can... what did we say before? We Shield we said for move. Right, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. Stay. Stay as it is. Right, so Zeke is going to be put down, I think. So I've still got Thomas, so I don't oh, yeah, I've moved yeah. him. Go on, Thomas. So I'm just going to make sure that he can. So turn one, he's a tactician, he is going to reduce threat. And then turn two, he's going to continue his sneaking. I don't want to go off the board. I could end the game now. But you I'm going to get, get yep. three and the four for survival. Mm -hmm. You're going to get two and the one, so I'm going to get a six-four victory. Yep. So I'm trying to increase my odds with a few more killings. So I'm going to move a sneak amount to here to make sure I'm pretty much protected to go out and turn seven. Okay. No kill zone, so we're just going to do melee. Uh, oh, the event card, sorry. So event. The hunger again, so we are now in, we are still in, well we're in low threat so now, so plus one wrong. first for the threat. And then low threat, each player moves one eligible walker towards the nearest survivor. Hmm, that's quite interesting. So, mm, which one would you like to move towards the nearest survivor? There are only two eligible walkers and there are only one survivor they can go to, so we both actually get to move a walker in the same direction. God damn it. So, that one's in contact with that. That might be really bad for you, because that one is going to shamble in. It's my initiative, and it's definitely going to come through. Yeah. Um, this one that might one, as we well. see if it moves. Yeah, so it's in distance. It's just a question of whether you roll that shield or not. So, let's so see. So, what we're saying? Shield means it can move. Shield for move. Nope, yep. stays put. Goodness for that. So, we're on to... So, melee. combat. So, combat. threat goes up by one again. We're up it to eight. This strong. is the bottom of low threat. We need to keep that down. Which combat so would you like to do let's first? go with Amy. So, I've got an attack. You've got defence. Amy's Amy defending. Can't do yeah. much. She can't do so much else. Let's see if we can attack. attack. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I saved one, but I am bitten. So, she takes one wound. And a bonus for the bite. And an extra wound for the bite. And is bitten. Dun, dun, dun. Nicely. So, we cause a separation. Yeah, all right, push back one. Yeah, so we're back. Marvellous. We'll do Charlie. Um, yeah. He has only got, oh, he's got a white melee, so I'll, I will attack, not okay. defend. And one for me, of course, for the uh, walker. Just one and That's one. That's good enough draw. for me. That will do. So we'll cause that pushback. Then over here, we have a series of combats. So, how do we split these? So, it's my initiative, so I'm going to choose how to split it. Uh, I need to kill Scott. So I'm going to split it that way. It makes sense for me to munch Scott um, and then see if I can kill uh, okay. that way. So what I've got, and this is the reason for the purple dice, we finally get to use it. So Harold is a three white attack with a reroll, and that's my purple is my walker mm -hmm. dice. So I get to roll that and, and just I'll one white, one of Scott in defence. Um, or he you have two red on his chair. Adds a red with his chair. Oh, he still gets the defence with his chair. Yes. Yeah, okay. It adds to both. Is oh, good. the walker by He's going to be one very roll. upset that's Scott, I think. Time. Let's just see what Scott rolls. Oh, that's awful. Right, Scott's out of there. Scott is so out of there. So he's got both, but I'm going with headshot the headshot superseding. Yeah, so, so he is dead. And like a Mario, he drops all his things as well. That's so what we wanted. All of these come down like rains of golden coins. There they are. Oh, disappointing, disappointing. Right, Zeke, see if so you can do him. With that one, we couldn't have pushed Scott back, so both the walker moves back one, and I move back one before he uh, drops his goodies right, like okay. Mario, so we've cleared that. So we've got Zeke going there, so you're quite good, but I'll get Craig two whites. is adding a red, and I'll, I'll use a purple for Craig's, just to show it, and I get two white 
and a red um, mm -hmm. with Eugene. So I can re-roll any of those ones, and the yeah. purple is Craig's pitiful effort. So Craig... You huh? say pitiful effort. Pitiful effort. effort. Yeah. Thank you very much, Craig. He's probably going to do the damage. He is, so I, I can re-roll all of those, so we'll yeah. see what happens. And Ezekiel, oh, just gets two. So I'll re-roll those two for Eugene with his stab. And that couldn't oh. be better. And the keep takes obviously no use to either remove or add a exclamation mark because there's too many. So Ezekiel goes down as well. So he can be pushed back. So yeah, there would be clearance. Is he carrying anything? He was not. Uh, he was actually. Oh, so oh. tell a lie, he was carrying one. That's what we like to see. Right. Okay. There's not much left on my side. So we have some infection to roll. Amy has been bitten. Let's see where she gets it. So a shield is fine. Okay. And she's, she's okay. Fine. She's so we'll okay. Stand ups off camera. So it's round seven, the final round. Uh, it's my initiative, but there's nothing I can really do. So Sophia has one loot token, but she can only carry one in her pack. There's another one here ready to be picked up, and Amy already has one as well and could pick up another one, but she can't get all the way over there. So that's a problem for me. I can't score the victory point for the scenario then for having three items. All these ones down here, Dan can just pick up one with each of his Which characters. Because character, normally I wouldn't be able to pick up both, because I've got to move Except and you can't do Craig. two. How many can Craig pick up? Craig has already got two, so, ah, so he's already well, got two, pick up but two. I can pick up that one, pick up that one, have the four, by having the four, so pick up and yeah. pick up. That gives me the two scenario points for having yes. four supplies. Yeah. So, and, then and then obviously I Thomas get off the can board. very easily get off. So that's three for getting him off the board. It's two scenario points and I've got a survival point. Because I've got more than half, I've got all of mine, uh, more than half, I get an extra point Did I even that. injure anyone? No. <laughs> oh, did one oh, did. wound on Charlie? Oh, Charlie. He, he got a, a nick. Um, <laughs> and look at, look at mine, down, of course. Because you've lost four, four of the starting six, you wouldn't get the survival point. So yeah. I've actually got maximum points. So it's three, two for the supplies, one for the bonus. So when I was talking before about the levels, that is add it onto my score, take it off yours. That's yeah. a 10 nil. Right. It was it's an 11 minus one, but we won't go that far. <laughs> and this was all in good humour. So Andy's it just was. an exhibition game. Just well, it's an exhibition the, uh, game. How not to win, no. <laughs> on my part. No. Right, so we'll call it there and we'll just have a little chat about the game afterwards. <laughs> right, fantastic. Well, I hope you liked that bat rep, me being absolutely taken apart. Yeah, yeah. very lucky. I got lucky. There's, um, a, there's a few bad dice rolls on my part, but I think, you know, outplayed definitely. It was so. more an exhibition to showcase some of the, the new rules. That's, that's what we like to say. Um, so with the scenario, some of the rules are designed to force you to choose different teams to just the, the killing machine, because yeah. if you just want to go and wipe out the opponent, it's a 6-4 minor victory. So you've yeah. got to play the scenario, you've got to get involved, you've got to try different things. And I think the way you've built in things in the tournament pack for Winter's End, like not being able to double up on weapons in the same... Yeah. Um, in the same faction allows you to take a lot more options of those weapons because there's loads of weapons yeah. out there. And I've got binders just, full to go yeah. through, and you use the same claw hammer, the same crossbow. Yeah, so it's encouraging the you best to, ones, but. to find out other other things in there. There are full details on the the website that hopefully is uh, captured now. So waitofire.com and then forward slash twd the Walking Dead. So you'll find the full website, all the details, uh, some more details about the mysterious settler. Uh, special character that will yes. make an appearance that wasn't in this scenario but will make an appearance at some stage. Yeah. So four games, the 2nd of December. Um, um, how much is it again? Good question. We might need to uh, 15 check. Pounds, I think it's 15 pounds. 15 pounds. And well, Paul's the money man. Yeah, and on that website you can sign up and register for the yeah. event there as well. So. Uh, we're already at 14 players as this was filmed and it's going to be capped at a maximum. So get in now because we've got so many boards and Paul's doing all the painting of the scenery. There yeah. is a, a max capacity, so get in now when you see this. Yeah, fantastic. So thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Listen out for the Way of Fire podcast and follow us on the Way to Fire Facebook page. So thanks very much again, guys. Bye.